Welcome back to TrueFlix Network, where we continue to share meaningful subjects and truths unknown to the general public. Here, we dive deep into the heart of stories untold, uncovering the layers of history and knowledge that often remain hidden in plain sight. Our mission is to enlighten, educate, and empower our viewers with information that challenges the conventional narrative. Stay with us as we embark on another journey of discovery, bringing to light the realities that shape our world but are seldom spoken of. This is True Flix Network, the home of the unexplored, the unheard, and the undeniable truths of our time. Today, we unravel the history of January and its deep connections with the Roman calendar and the god Janus. In this short story, we'll explore how this first month of the year came to be and its significance in heralding new beginnings. As we turn the pages back to ancient Rome, we'll discover the intriguing role Janus, the god of doorways and transitions, played in shaping not only the calendar, but also our modern celebrations of the new year. Join us as we delve into the past to understand how ancient traditions have influenced the way we welcome each new year, bridging the old with the new in a timeless cycle of renewal and reflection. This is more than just a story. It's a journey to the roots of our calendar and the myths that have shaped our understanding of time itself. Have you ever paused to ponder why the year begins with January? Why not March or perhaps September? The story of January, the first month of the year, is a tale steeped in history, mythology, and celestial calculations. Our journey begins in ancient Rome, over 2,000 years ago. Originally, the Roman calendar had only 10 months, beginning with March and ending with December. January and February didn't even exist. But that changed in 713 BC, when the second king of Rome, Numa Pompilius, decided to align the calendar with the lunar year. Numa Pompilius, who reigned after Romulus, the founder of Rome, is often credited with various significant reforms that shaped early Roman culture and religion. Among his most impactful changes was the alignment of the Roman calendar with the lunar year. Before Numa's reform, the Roman calendar was based on a lunar system, but was significantly shorter than the actual solar year consisting of only 10 months and about 304 days. This discrepancy between the calendar and the solar year led to confusion and misalignment with agricultural seasons, which were crucial for the agrarian society. Numa Pompilius, recognizing the need for a more accurate system, decided to add two months, January and February, to the existing 10-month calendar. January, named after Janus, the two-faced god of beginnings, transitions, and doorways, became the first month of the year. February, derived from februam meaning purification, was placed at the end of the year initially. So please understand that January was not the first month yet. It was actually the 11th one. This reform expanded the calendar to approximately 354 days aligning it more closely with the lunar cycle. However, it was still not perfectly aligned with the solar year, which led to further adjustments in later years, including the introduction of the leap year system under Julius Caesar. Numa's changes were not just practical, but also deeply symbolic, integrating religious and cultural elements into the calendar. By aligning the calendar more closely with the lunar cycle and the seasons, Numa Pompilius helped to structure Roman life in a way that was more in harmony with the natural world and its cycles. His legacy in calendar reform reflects the broader impact he had on Roman society, emphasizing wisdom, religious piety, and a more peaceful approach to governance. In 153 BC, a significant change occurred in the Roman calendar that would further solidify January's status as the beginning of the year. This change was related to the tenure of the Roman consuls, the highest elected political officials in the Roman Republic. Before 153 BC, 
the Roman consular year did not start on January 1st. The consuls, who were elected annually, would typically begin their tenure on March 15th, known as the Ides of March. This date had deep-rooted significance in Roman culture and was aligned with the traditional 10-month Roman calendar established during the monarchy. However, in 153 BC, due to military and administrative needs, particularly in response to the Lusitanian War in Hispania, modern-day Spain and Portugal, a decision was made to start the consular year earlier. This decision was primarily practical. Starting the consular year earlier allowed the newly elected consuls to mobilize and organize military campaigns efficiently at the beginning of the campaigning season. The Roman Senate decreed that the consuls would assume office on January 1st, a date already significant due to the religious observances honoring Janus, the god of beginnings and transitions. This change meant that the official state calendar now began in January, further emphasizing the month's importance. This shift to January the 1st as the start of the consular year was a pivotal moment in the Roman calendar. It marked a transition from a calendar system based primarily on agricultural cycles and religious observances to one more aligned with administrative and political needs. Over time, as the Roman Empire expanded and influenced other cultures, the practice of starting the year on January 1st spread, eventually becoming the norm in many parts of the world. Thus, the decision in 153 BC to begin the consular year on January 1st was not only a practical administrative reform, but also a key moment in the evolution of the modern calendar as we know it today. However, not everyone was quick to adopt this change. Many cultures, including some parts of the Roman Empire itself, continued to regard March as the start of the year for centuries. It wasn't until the introduction of the Gregorian calendar in 1582, a reform of the Julian calendar, that January firmly established itself as the first month of the year across the Western world. The establishment of January as the universally recognized first month of the year in the Western world is indeed closely tied to the introduction of the Gregorian calendar in 1582. This calendar reform was a significant milestone in the history of timekeeping. Prior to the Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar, introduced by Julius Caesar in 45 BC, was the predominant calendar system in the Roman world and subsequently in various parts of Europe. The Julian calendar was a substantial improvement over the earlier Roman calendar as it more accurately aligned the calendar year with the solar year by introducing a leap year system. However, over centuries, even the Julian calendar's minor discrepancies with the actual solar year, about 11 minutes per year, added up, leading to a significant misalignment. By the 16th century, this misalignment had grown to about 10 days. To restore the alignment of the calendar with the solar year, Pope Gregory XIII instituted the Gregorian calendar reform in 1582. This reform involved adjusting the leap year system to make the calendar more accurate and involved skipping 10 days to realign the calendar with the solar cycle. One key aspect of the Gregorian calendar was the retention of January 1st as the start of the year. While January 1st had been recognized as the first day of the year in various cultures following Roman traditions, its acceptance was not universal prior to the Gregorian reform. Different cultures and regions often celebrated the new year on different dates, including March 25th and December 25th. With the adoption of the Gregorian calendar, January 1st became more uniformly recognized as the start of the year. The new calendar was initially adopted by Catholic countries, but over time, Protestant and Orthodox regions, and eventually most of the world, adopted the Gregorian calendar. This widespread adoption helped standardize January 1st as the beginning of the year across the Western world and later globally. Therefore, the introduction of the Gregorian calendar was crucial in firmly establishing January as the first month of the year, unifying various cultural practices 
into a single standardized system of timekeeping that is still in use today. And what about January's length of 31 days? Well, that's another gift from the Romans. Initially, January had only 30 days, but Julius Caesar added an extra day during his calendar reform in 46 BC, making January the month. We know today, the doorway to a new year, filled with 31 opportunities for fresh beginnings. So, I hope you have a better understanding of how January, the first month of the year, owes its position and name to ancient Roman political strategy and mythology. It began as an addition to an already existing 10-month calendar dedicated to the god Janus, only to later be promoted to the start of the year for strategic reasons. Its length of 31 days is a result of Julius Caesar's calendar reform. Despite initial resistance, the adoption of the Gregorian calendar cemented January's position at the start of the year, a position it continues to hold in the present day. And so, as we welcome another January, we're not just flipping a page on a calendar. We're stepping through a historical, mythological, and celestial doorway, embarking on a journey that's been in motion for more than two millennia. And that, my friends, is the real truth of January, the first chapter of our pagan year. At Trueflix Network, our journey through the corridors of history is just beginning, and there's so much more to explore and discover. We invite you to be a part of this continuous journey of enlightenment and exploration. By subscribing to the Trueflix YouTube channel, you ensure that you're always in the loop, ready to dive into the next fascinating story or uncover another hidden truth. Our commitment is to bring you content that not only informs but also inspires. Content that challenges you to think deeper and see the world from a new perspective. So, if you're intrigued by what you've learned today and eager for more, don't hesitate. Hit that subscribe button and join our community of curious minds and truth seekers. Together, let's keep the flame of knowledge burning bright and continue to uncover the untold stories and truths that await us. Subscribe to Trueflix Network on YouTube today and let's embark on this journey of discovery together. Remember, Every subscription is a step closer to unraveling another fascinating piece of our world's puzzle. Be part of the story with TrueFlix Network, where truth and knowledge meet.